Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop and uh, we've got a customer that came in this morning and I think he came in from the St. Louis area. Tell yes. the folks your name. Hi, my name is Michael Fishman and I did come in from the St. Louis area and I'm just hoping that you can get my mandolin sounding optimally. Okay, well that's what we'll work on here. We've got a mandolin and we're going to show you here in just a moment. Um, so uh, how long did it take you to get here this morning? Uh, it took me about uh, about two hours, a little less. Yeah, that's a good drive from St. Louis. Um, I was just wanting to know how long have you been playing mandolin? Tell the folks that. Well, it's a recent acquisition of mine. I picked one up at a pawn shop. Oh, a yeah? Different mandolin, in fact. And uh, just kind of took to it. So Okay. <laughs> I love it. So you've just been a, just a short time then? Exactly. But I have played guitar for a while, so there is some... some, some yeah. Some, some experience some, on a string instrument. <laughs> well, that, that, some of that transfers, that's for sure, especially the timing and that kind of thing. So what kind of music do you get into? Are you bluegrass I, country or I something else? I love bluegrass else? country. I love newgrass. I love Sam Bush. I love oh, yeah. the Yonder Mountain String Band. I got, to meet, I got to meet Sam a couple of times. He's a really nice fellow. I saw him recently in St. Louis back mm -hmm. in July. And it oh, was yeah. a fabulous show. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's awesome. I got to eat lunch with him, as a matter of fact, uh, out at a restaurant. And he was he was a really cool guy. Just fun to talk to. Okay, so what are we going to do to your mandolin? And here, here is the mandolin. It's a uh, lower mandolin. It says the lower on it. And uh, it's a uh, LM600BK is what it says here. So what are we going to do to this thing? Well, I really just kind of want you to do to it what you would do to it if it were yours. Okay, I call that the full meal deal. <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> I stole that from, uh, I think, Dairy Queen, but uh, that's what we're going to call this. We're going to give it the full meal deal. Now, in this case, that even includes, we're going to change the frets. Um, now, I'm going to try to do all this while he waits. So, uh, this will kind of give you some idea that I am fast like I tell you that I am fast. So, hopefully, that's the way this is going to work out. So, we're going to pull pull all these frets out of here and we're going to replace them with these smaller frets. We're going to level the fretboard because I already see a pretty good hump in this fretboard. Uh, we're going to work a little bit on the feet. The feet aren't matching up 100% but they're pretty close so they're, they're not bad. We probably will put a deer antler saddle on this and we're going to scallop this down. And if that's not enough I'll think of something else along the way. So here we go. We started yanking the frets out of the uh, tail here and I wasn't too concerned about this because we're going to scallop this down. But I was getting a ton of tear out and you can probably see there. So I have just taken plain water and just soaked this fretboard down as good as I can with just plain water and I am hoping that's going to minimize the tear out. So I'm going to pull a fret here and see what we get. I'm going to take a little more time pulling these too, which will help, but sometimes ebony is extremely brittle. Uh-oh, it's brittle. Yeah, it, 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 didn't, it doesn't show the tear out, but it did right here. I'm going to have to glue that piece back in. So this may take a little longer than we're expecting. I'm going to soak it down just as good as I can. I was getting really bad tear out for a while back here, but now I've been soaking it so much more as I go and uh, taking as much time as I can with it and it's pulling out much, much better. It's still chipping a little bit, but you got to expect a little bit of chip out, I guess. But it's not bad now compared to where we started. Not too bad, not too bad.
Because I've seen quite a hump in this area here when the frets were on there, I'm going to take some regular sandpaper and a, a flat board and just try to level the fretboard a little bit right in this area before we put the frets back in it. That probably won't fix the problem, but it, it won't hurt it for sure. As I look down the fretboard, it looks pretty flat when I look at the edges, but I'm sure the hump will reappear when we put the frets back in there. Okay, the method for putting these frets back in here that I use, first of all, I just show you that I've already nipped the ends off of these frets because they have to go over the binding here. So I've nipped both ends and I set them in the slot, put the block right under the fret, I take this piece of aluminum that I've been using for years that's kind of got a little dish in the bottom of it. I hit the, drive them right in. It does a real good job. Sounds worse than it is. It's, this leather is protecting the wood right here. So there's leather here and it's on a soft pad. So there's a lot of absorption there, but it does drive the fret right in. We've uh, got all the frets redriven back in there. You can see that there's some filing dust on here. I've leveled all the frets. We've uh, adjusted the truss rod. The truss rod had that uh, problem I've been seeing quite a bit lately where the truss rod was completely backwards again. In other words, it's got one of those truss rods that you can loosen and then it'll get tight again and it was all the way loosened and tight. So I turned it the other way and we tightened her up and uh, got her nice and snug. Got all the frets good and level now. I'm just going to take uh, a little bit of um, uh, 600 grit right now and I'm going to work on these ends because they're a little bit sharp having uh, had to nip them off and file them down. So I'm just going to work with some 600 grit here and try to get rid of any burrs that would be out on the edges of the frets. I've already re-rounded the frets too after leveling them so they're all ready to go. Now I'll go to 1200 grit and just polish off the tops of the frets to get rid of any filing marks that are on there from re-rounding them. And this again will scuff the fretboard, which is absolutely what I want because I can see if there's any imperfections in the fretboard with this scuffing. And then we'll level that all back out with a single edge razor blade here in just a moment. I think you can see that I've already scalloped this down and that's in looking pretty good. I've already used a uh, single edge razor blade to flatten it off real good. And now I'll take this 1200 grit and just make sure there's no markings in that. But this 1200 grit, the reason I like to go this way too, if you just work on one fret at a time. If you get that one fret a thousandth of an inch lower, it can buzz. This way it spreads it out pretty good. You don't really ever really knock anything down. It just kind of keeps it all level. Plus it polishes it very quickly this way versus one fret at a time. And I'm all about speed. Looks good, feels good, so it must be good. We've got her all finished up and uh, it turned out great. The action is incredibly low. Um, I will, I'll just give you a recap of everything we did to it. We put a deer antler saddle on it. We matched this uh, foot of the bridge to the top better. We put the LS250s. These strings are miracle workers as far as I'm concerned. These LS250s are the best string that I know of for a mandolin. Um, that you know if you really want more woody sound you know soften up the the highs and things like that these are the strings to go with we scalloped this down we oiled the fretboard leveled all the frets new frets all the way down it uh you know put the smaller frets in adjusted the truss rod pretty much everything you can think of 
the uh, intonation is set perfectly. It's just really a good sound of mandolin now. A lot of punch. Just I'm really not hitting it hard at all. Just just a light little chop, and it's just killer. Got a real good sound. Got a very good sound. Needs to settle in a day or two. We put uh, felt on the uh, pick guard covers on both sides to uh, dampen the strings. And so we're going to let Michael tell you what his impression is. Well, I have to admit that I'm very pleased, Jerry. I think you're a miracle worker, <laughs> and I can't wait to get it home and start thumping on it. Well, good. Looking forward to it. I appreciate the business, Michael. Tell your friends that's how I get my business. Uh, you can count on it. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks for watching.